Today we're cutting in half what might be the best budget mock toe by Rock Rooster. This video is sponsored by Rock Rooster and just like my other sponsored videos, I don't make any money if you guys decide to buy these. They just pay me to do the video and then if you guys decide to buy them, you decide to buy them. That way it, it helps keep me unbiased and more, instead of selling the boot to you, I just kind of talk through it and you make up your own decision. But when I was originally talking to Rock Rooster about doing a sponsored video, we were talking about doing a Chelsea style work boot and then after looking on their site, I saw these bad boys and I was like, we should do these. And the reason I wanted to do them was most budget mock toes have a, a plastic welt and after like, I don't know, like a couple months of wearing, they start to crack and then your boots are ruined. Versus these, they have a leather welt and I found that really interesting. It opens up a whole world of possibilities for resoling and the longevity of them. So let's start with the boot information. So the brand is Rock Rooster and the model is the Soft Toe Wedge Work Boot. That's the style, but the actual code of this style is AP611 and the name is Norwood. So if you want these particular ones, just make sure that last five digits is AP611 on the website. And they're made in China and they retail for $128 on their website. So let's start cutting this apart, starting with the toe and the tongue. Starting with the tongue leather, this is 1.5 millimeters thick. It's a full grain oil tan leather, which basically means it's a chrome tan leather with oils infused into it. And it's also tumbled. And that's why you get this really soft, supple, malleable leather. And it's, it looks like it's the exact same leather as the toe box leather or the vamp leather, but the vamp leather is two millimeters thick. So just a little bit thicker and maybe not as pliable. And then on the inside, you've got this uh, kind of chevron pattern fabric on the inside. This is the Coolmax fabric. And on their website, it says, Coolmax is a brand name for a series of polyester fabrics developed and marketed by Invista, formerly DuPont, textiles and interiors. And it kind of goes on to say that it's a hydrophobic, a moderately hydrophobic material that kind of wicks moisture away instead of that moisture sitting on your foot and in your sock, it wicks it away so you don't get the swamp foot. And then to the actual mock part of it, the, the little ribbed part around the toe, Sometimes boot companies will put a hard plastic in there to give it the shape and it gets really annoying because it breaks after, after some use and if you step on it once and it kind of deforms the, the shape of the toe. So I was glad to see that this one doesn't have any structure into it. It's just rolled leather to give you that uh, mock toe look. So next let's tackle the back stay and the counter and see kind of how that's structured. Starting on the inside, working our way out with the counter cover, this patch here, the lighter color stuff. So this isn't leather, even though it kind of feels like leather. It's a suede fabric that helps catch your heel and prevents it from slipping and giving you blisters. And then the counter is a plastic counter with some reinforcement in it. And both of these aren't the best materials, but for $128, it's pretty on par with what we've seen in other boots, whether it's the Doc Martens or the Timberlands versus the other end of the spectrum, like the Knicks and the other handmade boots. You're gonna see a leather counter there. And this boot kind of is the opposite end of the argument when it comes to boots. The Knicks and the handmade boots, you're investing in something you're gonna wear every single day for several years. These boots are more of a one year work boot, a weekend warrior boot, or a stylish boot. So you're, you're not paying for those high end features and those really high quality things that you're only going to see the benefits from after years of wear. Moving to the leather, so this is the same leather as the Vamp, it's the tumbled um, oil tanned leather. And then we've got the hardware, so this hardware isn't solid brass, it's just metal hardware with a brass coating on top. And one thing I thought was really interesting and a, a really smart thing that they did is they add this little patch here that is on the back side of the logo. Because anytime you heat press any logo or any design into leather, it's gonna kind of um, compromise the structural integrity of that part of the leather. So they add this patch on here 
to give it that extra structure so if this starts to get pulled and, and uh, manipulated, it's not gonna rip at those burn marks. Now, let's get to the insert. This insert is by far the thickest insert we've seen in any boot or shoe so far. This thing is 14 millimeters thick at the heel, so just over a half an inch thick. And you've got these two little spots of pour on in the heel and in the, the ball of your foot. Now the next step is cutting it completely in half, and I can see there's a shank in here, so we we'll have to go to the bandsaw for this one. Okay, we've got it cut in half, and let's go through the layers, starting with the insole. So we've got a fiberboard insole, and I'm, I don't know what it's stitched to. There's a stitch line here. And then next you've got what looks like a layer of foam for the midsole. And then there's a pink layer below that, and I'm not sure what this pink layer is. I wonder if it's kind of a, almost like a cork layer where it breaks into your foot. And then to the outsole, so this is a dual density outsole. You've got the polyurethane lighter layer, and then the, I think, TPU, thermopolyurethane layer on the outside, which is gonna be more oil resistant. It's not gonna absorb the oil and it's gonna be more slip resistant and it's gonna wear a lot slower than a foam would. So let's get the rest of these layers torn out and see what this pink layer is. So this is really interesting. This uh, outer stitch that would be considered the storm welt stitch, that that flange of leather on the welt is usually stitched to the upper of the boot, that's just a faux stitch. It's, it's just for decoration. But it's still good you're welted and you've still got the stitch line that goes through the welt down into the sole. And then you've also got the stitch that is hidden underneath the welt that stitches the upper to the insole to the welt. So there's still two lines of stitches holding this boot together. The storm welt stitch just happens to be a fake stitch for decoration. And that kind of also answers our question about the pink layer. So this layer, I guess, would be considered the slip sole. It's what the welt is sewn to, and then the outsole is glued on. And there is a little teeny bit of a stitch right at the toe here, but that's to help keep from keeping the toe from separating if you're kicking it a lot. Um, but it's, it's the same construction as a lot of the other mock toe boots out there. It's good you're welted and it's got the sole glued on. That's nice because if you ever need to resole these, all the cobbler has to do is take off the worn out outsole and glue a new one on. They don't have to do anything with any other part of the boot. And then another thing is these voids in the sole, these can be good and bad. In the Vibram wedge sole, you'll see some holes drilled in the heel. And what that does is it reduces the weight and gives you a little bit more of a squishy feel. And I could not get the outsole to separate from this pink layer. So it's glued on there pretty well. I wouldn't be too concerned about it coming apart. A lot of times in a cheaper boot, you can really just tear these things apart, but this one's really strong. So overall, what do I think of this boot? I think it's pretty good for the price. You know, this is never gonna be as good of a boot as a NYX or a Whites or any of the handmade boots, but it's a fraction of the price. So if you're just needing a casual work boot, or you like the style of these boots, or you don't need it to last five years, this looks like it's a good option. I'm really glad that this, this welt is actually leather and that it's actually sewn correctly and that it's Goodyear, Goodyear welted. Because that was the one concern I had going into this, is that maybe it was just glued together. But it's not. It's constructed really well. Decent materials, especially for the price. The leather's good. The outsole is nice and squishy. Obviously there's some things that could be improved, like the counter, you, if you're not careful, you're gonna break that, and then the counter cover isn't leather, um, you know, and a few things here and there. But for the price, it's not bad at all. Let me know what you guys think. Have you owned a pair of these or the other alternatives, the more expensive alternatives? Have you had any issues with them? Have you liked them? Because uh, these look really comfortable and I've been wearing them 
in my shorts all day and uh, I think they're really comfortable. A lot of squish in there and you guys know I'm a sucker for comfort. And uh, thanks for everything. See ya.